I am Ahmed Daud and in this session we are going to see ROC curve. ROC curve is actually uh, the receiver operating characteristic curve is another common tool used with binary classifiers. It is very similar to uh, precision recall. So you can see here similar to precision recall curve but instead of plotting if I will zoom in instead of plotting precision recall versus recall ROC curve this ROC curve plots true positive rate versus false positive rate okay in the last session we have seen precision recall curve at which uh, on the x axis we are having recall on the y axis we have we were having precision okay like this if i will show you here like this on the x axis we were having recall on the y axis we were having precision okay but in the roc case instead of we have on the x axis false positive rate false positive rate and on the y axis we were having true positive rate okay so we will discuss what is true positive rate and what is false positive rate okay <clears throat> true positive rate is same as the recall and sometimes we also call it as the sensitivity okay so it has the formula true positive divided by true positive plus false negative okay you are already familiar with that so what is false positive rate i will show you from the confusion matrix <clears throat> okay so this is the uh, on this side we usually have uh, actuals uh, if i will okay on on this side on the column wise we are having let's say predictions okay so what is true positive rate true positive rate or you can say recall okay these are the same and it's also called as a sensitivity okay these three terms are the same okay it means how many positive instances are correctly classified okay these are the total positive instances we have in our data out of the total positive instances how many instances are correctly classified it means true positive divided by true positive plus false negatives true positive plus false negative are the positive instances and out of all the positive instances how many are correctly classified okay <coughs> now here there is an other you can say recall which is uh, formally not call as a recall we call it as a true negative rate it means how many negative instances are correctly classified okay these total true negatives plus false positives are total negative instances okay we have in our sample these are so out of all negative instances how many negative instances are correctly classified out of all negative instances how many negative instances are correctly classified this will become true negative divided by true negative plus false positive we usually call is as a true negative rate okay here i will write true negative rate okay so this is also called sometimes true negative rate or specificity specificity okay if you can see here now if i will use another okay so what is false positive rate false positive rate if i will write here false positive rate it means how many if you consider the same negative instances how many instances negative instances are correct incorrectly classified as a positive out of all the negative instances if i write here how many negative instances uh, 
are incorrectly classified as positive instances out of all negative instances okay you can consider in this way so how many negative instances are incorrectly classified as positives out of all negative instances so how many negative instances we have true negative plus false positive and here these are the instances that are actually negative but incorrectly classified so this will be here so you can see here fpr it it is fpr false positive event it is equal to false positive event fp divided by true negative plus false positive so fpr is the ratio of negative instances that are incorrectly classified as a positive now you got an idea who so this will be considered as a true negative rate or true positive rate okay but here we are considering true positives this will be a like here this will be a, a false positive rate here we are considering the negatives instances but we are calculating uh, the sort of errors okay how much uh, how many number of negative instances are incorrectly classified and in case of true positive rate we are considering how many positive instances are correctly classified okay so we plot a in roc on the x axis we plot fpr false positive rate and on the y axis we usually have true positive rate okay so now <clears throat> we want such a model which has minimum false positive rate and maximum true positive rate okay and if we are trying to select the threshold we want uh, such a th threshold which uh, at which we have high true positive rate and less false positive rate okay but if uh, usually we use roc curve for, uh, to compare the models okay so we want such a model which will have curve more towards the top left corner to this two, okay so let's say if this is another curve uh, this green will be another curve okay therefore i will make in more precise way this is another this will be another curve let's say and this is the curve for another model which is equal to this okay we want such a curve which is more closer to the uh, top left corner what is actually mean here you can see this let's say you will select an uh, any point let's say this one this point okay at this point this blue curve have about 0.3 positive rate true positive rate at the same point this red curve have uh, about the 0.5 true positive rate at the same point the golden curve have 0.82 positive rate true positive rate and at the same point this green one have uh, approximately one okay so here uh, and the, the the false positive rates for all the curves is same about uh, let's say uh, 0.19 this is false positive rate for all the curves so against same false positive rate which curve is giving highest true positive rate so this green one is giving you the uh, highest high true positive rate okay so in the same way like you have calculated the area under the curve if you want to see the uh, uh, to uh, compare the models in terms of scores you can calculate the scores like, uh, like this area this will be area for the blue curve 
okay area under the curve so this will be less area this will be uh, this will be less area as compared to the this red one so red will have this area okay in this way you can also compare the areas like here if you want to see the area under curve under the curve of roz this one this is the actual curve if i will uh, copy this from here and i will show you here here you can see this curve this curve this curve having this area area under roc curve 0.62 okay if some model uh, some another model uh, let's say another classifier this classifier have area under curve area under roc curve let's say 0. Uh, 0.8 so this will be best as compared to uh, this blue one okay in this way you can also compare the models okay so uh, this is very uh, uh, like commonly used to compare the models now you can um, maybe ask the question so it is similar to the roc curve is similar to the position recall curve as in the position recall curve area under curve we can use to compare the models we can compare the models and uh, if uh, we can also set up the thresholds in both curves by using both curves. So where we can use ROC curve and where we should use the precision recall curve. For a single or a single point, if you want to remember, where you have imbalanced data, you should use precision recall curve. And remaining all the cases, you can use ROC curve to compare the models okay so what is the reason why in the case of imbalanced data you should use uh, uh, precision recall curve the reason is that in the uh, here you can see from here if i will compare this one with this now here you can see this is precision recall curve and this is roc curve this uh, uh, these curves uh, this curve is for the same classifier uh, uh, a classifier same classifier have this precision recall curve and this roc curve here you can see according to precision recall curve our uh, area under curve is very low 0 0.42 but in this case uh, in the case of roc our area is 0 0.62 which is higher okay so in the case of imbalanced data in the case of imbalanced data set our roc curve overestimate usually overestimates the goodness of a model okay here you can say well, we can easy, easily visualize it has a very uh, uh, very uh, large room to improvement like you can have a curve like this but you have very uh, uh, low curve and uh, your curve have very uh, low height as compared to other curves that you can have okay your uh, this blue curve is closer to your base okay so uh, but roc curve according to roc curve it seems that your model is not too bad according to this curve it seems that like your model is uh, your classifier is not too bad okay uh, it is just because that you are using imbalanced data set and you have seen that in the in this data set you have predictions uh, let's say uh, about 300 uh, if you will consider the true values uh, you have total uh, 300 samples and out of two 300 sample, 200 samples are zeros and uh, like a 209, uh, 209, I think so. Okay, we can see from here. Yeah, 209 samples you have here. You have 209 zeros and uh, 91 ones okay in this data so here you can see this is imbalance of data set you have so in case of imbalance that uh, data set you should prefer to use precision recall curve 
and in the case of uh, when you have uh, a balanced data and in all other the cases uh, when you have some sort of uh, good data set and balanced data set you can use ROC curve okay uh, and ROC curve is a uh, good in, uh, way of uh, visualizing also uh, because uh, and it's a different way of uh, uh, visualization here recall is also a score precision is also a score but in the case of ROC, this this is recall. Recall is a score, but this is type of error. Okay, as you are growing along the x-axis, you are uh, your error is increasing. Your false positive rate is increasing. As you are growing along the y-axis, your uh, as score is increasing, and you want such a model that should have like this. Okay, like this curve, which which can have high uh, true positive rate against very low false positive rate. But in that case, in the case of position recall, we usually uh, understand in this way, we have a high uh, such type of model, which have high recall and high position. Okay. Or if you, you are selecting threshold, then also you will select a such type of threshold where your position and recall both are high. Okay. It, it's just a way of analyzing your uh, models scores. Okay. So for a, a, a single point to remember, ROC curve where you uh, 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 where you have imbalanced data set, you should use precision recall curve. Otherwise, you can use ROC curve. Okay. So if you want to calculate uh, ROC curve, okay. So you can import a function from the sklearn dot matrix. Okay, ROC curve, and it will work in the same way as precision recall curve works. Okay, I will show you here. Yeah, here you can see ROC curve. Here you will pass the true values and the probabilities belonging to class one. It will generate different thresholds and against different thresholds, it will uh, it will have a, a range of thresholds and against each threshold, it will have a true positive rate and false positive rate. Okay, so in this way, you will have a large number of true positive rates and false positive rate for a single classifier. Okay, uh, because this class, the classifier will have, or uh, uh, classifier has given you these probabilities that you are comparing with your true values upon different thresholds. Okay, anyhow, so if you want to plot them uh, on the x axis, let's say false positive rate, on the y axis, you have a True positive rate, and you can use a SNS dot line plot. Okay, if you want to calculate the ROC score area under curve score, you can import from the SQLint dot matrix this uh, function, and you can pass the same values, true values, and uh, uh, the probabilities. It will calculate the three uh, thresholds for true positive rate, false positive rate, and then it will calculate the area under curve score for you. Here you can see. And if you can, uh, you want to see that, uh, like uh, we calculated in the form of, uh, uh, in the uh, case of precision recall, just by passing the recalls and precision, we can also calculate by using this area under curve from SQL and dot matrix. And we will pass true positive rate and false positive rate to that. Here on the x axis, false positive rate, on the y axis, true positive rate, and it will also calculate the area under the curve 0.62 like here it's the same okay it's up to you what function you want to use okay for the point of view for the coding point of view it's very simple all the modules are available but uh, what are the concepts behind each module how how or when uh, these modules should use it is really important so for now thank you